But we, we expecting great things this morning as we do our new series, Road to Redemption. Pastor Joseph actually laid the foundation last week for us to be able to do this. Like all roads, they need a, they need a lot of foundation. And so we are sharing upon the road to redemption. It's just, again, speaking about where we're going to when we get to Passover Sunday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, whatever you want to call it. We are going to just celebrate something very special as a church. And are you ready this morning? Can I ask you to stand with me for a moment? We're going to pray. And for those that are at home, you can also stand if you want to. Those who are driving, don't stand, just drive. And uh, whatever you're doing, just join us this morning because I want to pray a prayer of faith over us because God is opening a window for us to receive. The enemy is trying to do everything to close the window. But God is greater than the enemy. Amen? And you have to decide this morning and I have to decide who we're going to choose to believe. Because if we believe God, we will receive his promises. If we believe a lie that the devil tells, we will receive nothing. And so we will receive that lie, which is, by the way, nothing. And so we choose this morning to raise our hands. And you don't have to with me, but just where you're standing. Father, I pray this morning for our church, Living Word Church. I pray for our community, Alberton and Ekraleni. I pray for our country, South Africa. And we also pray for those who may be finding themselves even out of our country. We bless them. And we bless you this morning as we lift you up. You said if we do, you will draw people to you. And so we expect you to come closer this morning because we are drawing closer. And we expect to feel the presence of God this morning because you are here. And so we ask you this morning for a special blessing because we are the children of the living God. And everybody said, amen. Amen. All right. Well, um, every time you gather together. As the church. And turn to somebody and say, I'm the church. He's talking about me now. Because this is not the church. This is the church with you. You are the church. And we are in church this morning because you are here. And so as we gather this morning, something special should be happening every time. We can expect that. Did you know that? Because God is here. Now, I know he's there where you're in the, playing uh, some sport or maybe you're fishing or... He's also there, but he's he's really present when everybody's together because then we represent his body. We're not just a part. We are the part. We are his body, and God's going to do something. So I want to ask you this morning, maybe you're listening, and maybe you've never heard us before. Maybe God caused you to tune in this morning morning and listen to this message. Then I want to say, ask God for something special for you. Uh, Maybe you don't want to ask something special for you. Maybe you want to do it for me. I'm happy to receive that. But you have a right to ask God for something special for you. And, you know, you may say, yeah, but we can't manipulate God and ask him anything. You can ask God whatever you want to. It is your right to ask. It is his right to answer and to provide. So God can take care of the legal side if you're not too sure about your prayer. But it's never your responsibility to not pray. It's our privilege to pray. You know, I've been, if you've ever gone fishing, and I went fishing recently, you can't catch a fish if you don't have your line in the water. Is that right? You're guaranteed to not catch a fish if there's no line in the water. You may not always catch a fish, but you know that you're definitely not going to catch one if you don't have a line in the water. So prayer is like putting our line in the water, saying, God, I'm trusting for you to give me fish today. My needs are fish or whatever your need is. Because God loves to bless his children. I don't know if you've ever been a parent and your child comes and he says to you, I really want you to give me something special today. Do you always feel angry and say, get away from me, you, you, you nuisance, you, you, you begging child? Or do you say, "Ah, oh, I feel so good because my child is again just depending upon me. Now, why would God be any different than you and I? Amen. So are you receiving something special today? Now, we are speaking about the road to redemption. And it sounds very complicated, so let me read to you what the dictionary speaks about redemption as. Because maybe it is a bit of an old English word, but it's a great word. Because if you hear what it means, you're going to say, I want to be on that road. Thank God for that road. Now, it says the action of saving or being saved from sin, error, or evil. That's in the dictionary. 
Uh, they may be taking it away soon because it's too spiritual, but it's still in the dictionary. And it says the action of regaining or gaining possession of something in exchange for payment. In other words, you are giving something to exchange as a payment to get something back. It's a cancelling of a debt. Now, if ever you've had your car repossessed, now hopefully nobody has, but there are people, it, do, it does happen, and don't feel guilty. But you know, if you've had your car, and let me use me, I've had my car repossessed. I'm just using this as an example now to show you something. And I go to the bank, because Lee's in the bank, and I say, Lee, uh, what could I do to get this car back? And he says, okay, let me check on my computer. You, you need to pay 10,000 Rand, Pastor Jack, then you can redeem your car. You can buy it back. You can cancel the debt. And so I give him the 10,000. He gives it to the bank, hopefully. And then the bank says, you've got your car back. There's nothing uh, owing to your car. You've redeemed your car. You've got it back. That's what redemption means, is to pay a price to get something back, to cancel the debt. I don't know about you, but the world is getting themselves into bigger debt every day. Every time there's a war, the world becomes poorer. Did you know that? And there are many wars. Every time the Americans decide to print money, we get poorer because they have nowhere to go. They just keep printing. And you know, when you start printing money and you don't own it, you become a slave to that money. And because you owe something now. And you see people are becoming more and more in debt. They are, they are becoming more and more slaves to stuff. And, and that's not God's plan. That's the enemy's plan. God's plan is to buy you back. God's plan is to say, redemption is, I want to pay the debt. I don't want that sword over your head. I don't want you to be a slave to anybody because you are my children. Who wants their children to be slaves? Put up your hand. Whose career for your child is slavery? Slavery is number one. Slavery is number two, number three. You need to find new parents. If you have parents that says, listen, you're going to be a slave, you, you really have to ask God for new parents or adoption. Because no good parent would say, I want my child, <coughs> excuse me, to be a slave. Is that right? So God, why would God want you to be a slave? But think about it. When you're a slave, you owe something to someone. And the enemy loves it when he's got a number on us to say, you owe me. And I've got something on you, and you're going to work all your life to pay that debt. And then at the end, when you're ready to retire, I'm going to say to you, it hasn't been paid in full because there's still interest. And so you work another lot of years to see if you can pay it off. And then the enemy says, well, you know what? Inflation's happened. And so he just changes the rules because he wants you to be a slave until you die. But God came to bring the road to redemption. Aren't you grateful for God? That road is paved with mercy. That road is paved with forgiveness. That road is paved with somebody who paid a debt to say to you this morning, I've canceled your debt. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody came to me um, and said to me, you know, everything you owe, Jack, everything. Or go and buy a few things, whatever you want to. But everything that you've bought, everything that you owe, I'm going to pay, I'm going to pay for everything. Would you like somebody like that? Uh, like Lee said, I'd like an uncle like that. Because, you know, everybody wants all their debt cancelled. But, you know, phenomenally, God gave us that in the Bible. And we need to be grateful. So uh, I'm going to share with you in a moment about that. But I, I was on a road trip this week or last week when you didn't see me. I went on a road trip with my brother. It wasn't really a road trip of redemption, but you can say it was because we went to visit my four sisters. I have four sisters and one brother. I had five sisters, now I've got four, and I'm the youngest child. And we hadn't seen them for many years because we're both very busy. They're busy. They don't live close. So we said, let's go and visit them. And it was awesome because you know what you're doing? You're buying back relationship when you go on a trip like that. You, you remember things. You speak about things you haven't spoken about. And all of a sudden, there's a form of redemption because you now said, I can buy back some time that, uh, that I haven't had. And it was great to be there. But um, before I go there, I must just share a story with you that happened to me uh, recently. As a matter of fact, it happened to me yesterday. When I woke up yesterday, I went for a bike ride with my wife at Mortefontaine in the morning. And we came back. And then my son phoned me and said, he's taking my grandchild, Nathan, to uh, 
to Redfly, which is not far away, and do I want to join them? So I dropped her off, I took my bicycle, and I went off to Redfly to have another ride with my grandson and my son. It was great, and then the rain came, uh, five minutes, ten minutes in, and then we had to come back, have some coffee, but it was a great morning. But on my way back to Alberton, I was driving up Swatkopis, and that's our main road for those who don't know Alberton. It's the main road through Alberton. It's a very busy road. And as normal, I saw a lot of people begging. I don't know about you, but it's increased exponentially. And something happened to me on Saturday morning in my heart, in my spirit. I felt angry. Have you ever felt angry about what you see? Nobody. Now, I remember I also did a post on Time Out on the Saturday, which said, controlling your anger. <laughs> so I had to remember, now listen, re be careful that you don't be angry and sin. But I was angry because I thought about these peer people begging to survive. Now, I know they're con artists, but there are many real poor people that have just got no option. To eat, they have to beg. And I just thought, God, this is not right. This is not right. Won't you punish the people that have and remove them from office that have created this poverty in our country, stolen our money, stolen our jobs, stolen our dignity. That poor, I saw a woman there, she had, she had rags on begging. And I thought, God, all the dignity, she might as well be naked. There is no more dignity left for that person. They've stolen even her dignity. They took her job, they took her money, and now she's got no dignity. And I felt like God. I felt angry in my heart, frustrated. But it's not the end of the story. God set me up. You know, sometimes when you drive on your road to redemption that you're on, you drive and God sets you up. Have you had that feeling? You think you've been very spiritual and God just sets you up. Bang. And it wasn't long later. As a matter of fact, 15 minutes later, I arrived home. I'm packing my bicycle and all this stuff because I just put everything in the car and went off to ride now. Uh, I'm backing here. Yeah. I ride past this man. He was walking. There's always people walking in our area. I think our circle should have a sign saying there are very kind people in this circle that will give away stuff because we seem to attract people in our circle that keep making rotations to ask for stuff. Okay? They lubricate your giving syndrome. You know, you, you just can't stop giving because they help you in that. So I had this person, but I didn't recognize him because normally I know the regulars that come. And I rode past him, and then I started unpacking my car. Uh, and I had a plan. I wanted to do this, this, and this. And here came this same guy to my gate. And when they stand there by your gate, you know they want an audience. <laughs> they want to see you. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know if you've ever felt irritable by it to say, look, I'm busy now. I just have to unpack my car, and then I'm going to get to you or not. And uh, you've had those people. But I think God sent that person to me to test me. Because you see, I just experienced this anger and frustration to seeing these poor people. And here was another poor person. And so I said, eventually, okay, I put my stuff down. I said, walk to him. I said, what do you want, what do you want from me? Because, you know, you want clothes, food. What do you want? Because I don't really give money to people because I think it's just the principle. I give him food. I go and fetch something. But he said... I need money. And then he told me about his father that had died in Elspreet. He's going to have a pauper's funeral. And he's been standing all day to try and get the bus fare of 400 rand or 410 rand. And um, he, he said, I have, I have no job. I'm a plumber. I just haven't been able to get money to go to my own father's funeral. Now, um, and then he fell down on his knees. And he cried. I mean, I was turning around to carry on because I've heard these stories all before. And I, I know when the Holy Spirit says to me, you need to help this person or, you know, just give him an apple or something. And he said, here's my cell phone. You can keep it. Just give me the 400 rand. I will come and work the, my debt off and I'll, then I'll take my cell phone back. I need. And he said, please, my father, my father, he said. And he yeah. fell on his knees. That got me to think. Wow. And you may say, Jack, he's just a con artist taking your 400 rand. Don't worry. It was my money anyway, so you don't have to feel awkward. I made the decision all by myself. I went and fetched the 400 rand and gave it to him and said, you keep your cell phone. 
And he said he'll be back. He said his name's Polis. Paul. Um, but here is what God showed me. He said, you know what? That man is begging for an existence because nobody has given him any redemption. Nobody has given him a chance to redeem himself. But Jack, I gave you a chance. Remember that. I gave you a chance many years ago when I gave you an opportunity to accept Jesus into your life and I paid your, your debt. It was a clear reminder to me uh, of God's mercy in our lives and God's grace. Now, I don't know if that man will ever come back, but I learned to listen, to say God loves the poor. God loves the downtrodden. Yes, there are people taking chances in our country. We all know. They sit in parliament. But the real bad people, the real good people are begging for their living. And they are really down and out that they have to fall on their knees and cry and beg so they can go and visit their father. If that story is true, it again makes me angry because that person has no more dignity in their lives because of sin. And you know, I want to read you a scripture quickly. It's John 11 verse 15. And I'm going to get to redemption in a moment. But let me just read this prophetic word that a sinful man gave over the life of a righteous man. Caiaphas was the high priest. I don't believe that he served the God of heaven, although he represented him, but still God used him to give this prophetic word. When the Jews came to crucify Jesus and they wanted to really get the accusations going, Caiaphas said, you guys don't understand anything because they didn't know what to do. They were going to lose all their income, all their stuff. And he said, people, uh, um, let me just read that scripture quickly for you and then I will just say something about it. Do you not realize, Caiaphas said, this is the high priest, I'm just, that's the verse before, that it is better for you, for you, he's saying to the Jews, that one man die for the people than the whole nation perish. Isn't that a good deal? He says, it's better if one person die that the whole nation perish. He was prophesying about Jesus having to die for the whole nation. And isn't that a wonderful illustration that God realized that something was going to happen. Now, I want to read you another scripture because this is even more powerful uh, because it says um, in Matthew 20 verse 28, it says, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, uh, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That word ransom in the Greek means, is the same word as redemption. It means to buy back something that was a slave. came from the slave market. You went to the slave market and you saw Jack standing there and you said he's strong. I mean, that's many years ago and he's young many years ago. And you say, I want to buy Jack to work in my garden. I want to buy him to work in my fields. And then the, you would say, what is the ransom for Jack? What is the lutron? What is the redemption price to get him out of your existence and to free him from as a slave and then he can be my slave? So the ransom was X amount and then they could pay and I would become theirs. Now Jesus used that same word because people knew the word lutron or redemption because it had a price. It had a picture. When they heard ransom, they heard slave. They heard how much to pay, how much to get my car back, how much to get the repo car back into my possession. They knew exactly what it meant. And then Jesus used that terminology. He said when he spoke about his own life, he said, I came to buy, pay a ransom for you. It costs God everything to make us free. And that's why this morning I want to just encourage you that when we look, you know, people say the world's getting more sinful. Have you ever heard that they're getting worse? Do you feel the world's getting worse? No, it's not true. They've always been bad. 
I mean, sin is sin. You know, sin means to miss the mark. If I'm separated from God, whether I commit one sin or a hundred sins, doesn't make me worse a sinner. I'm still a sinner. I'm separated from God. God doesn't say, well, I'm going to have to die seven times to, because this is a bad sinner. God paid the price once for everybody. The fact is, sin separates you from God. Sin makes me a slave. And it doesn't matter how much of a slave I am, I'm still a slave. And so God says, whatever you do, it does, you will always be a slave until somebody pays the price, Jack. The Lutron, the redemption price that says, Jack is no longer a slave, he is free. And I'm going to read that scripture to you in a moment. So, yes, the world's getting more corrupt and they, they're practicing sin in better ways. Because you know sin is separation from God. The practice of sin is just the lifestyle of where those people are. Their lifestyle is even becoming more abominable. We know that. But it didn't change God's redemptive price. The bottom line is God still paid the price for people in the world. Even the sick people. The crazy people. The abnormal people. Like us. God paid the price. And he said, what's the price on their head? And the devil said, you're going to have to pay an ultimate price. And he said, I will. And so that's what Jesus did. I want to share that with you. Your road of redemption is paved with a massive price that God paid through Jesus. Amen. Don't think it came lightly. When you see all the sinners in the world and all the things people are doing, it's a reminder of how bad it is. And God knew that. So he said, I'm going to have to set the price high so that when I need to redeem those people. The price is paid. Aren't you grateful that God paid a price for us? Now there's another scripture that says in Romans 6 verse 20, that's why I'm saying the world is becoming more and more enslaved to their own greed, corruption, whatever. It's not new. The God they serve is an evil God. He's a slave driver. He wants everything in your life. It's the enemy. If we don't know Jesus, the enemy wants to drive us in so that we can lose our dignity. But God came to restore my dignity. Amen. He came to restore my physical health. He came to restore my emotions. He came to restore my finances. Because even that the devil steals. Everything. My children. My time, my talents, the enemy will not be happy just with your cloak. He'll want everything you possess. So Jesus needed to cover that in the full price of redemption. He took all those things into consideration. Romans 6 verse 20, and I've got two more scriptures. When you were slaves to sin, and we were slaves to sin because anything that owns you, you are its slave. If anything owns you, you are its slave. And you were free from the control. Listen to this scripture. It is so weird. Maybe you've never seen it this weird. But it is. It says, when you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. I don't want to be free from the control of righteousness. Because that means, righteousness means I have a right standing with God. I want a right standing with God. What does sin do? It makes me a slave, and it says you are free from that. It's another way of saying that you have no benefits of God's righteousness when you're in sin. So what does God want to do? He wants to tie you not with a slave of sin. He wants to tie you with forgiveness. Now you have all the benefits of righteousness. Why? Because God's paid the price. I have a right standing with God. I have all the benefits as a son. I have all the benefits as a citizen of South Africa. Or not. If somebody was willing to pay the price. You know why there's a battle going on in South Africa? Because nobody wants to pay the price. They can't. And they also don't want to recognize that Jesus already paid the price. And so we're never going to get our country right unless we start understanding what God has done. So, God paid a ransom for you. Then he went to the market and he said, how much for Jack? And the devil says this, and he said, I've paid it in full. 
he was free from the benefits of, now I'm making him tied to the benefits of righteousness. He can come into my presence as my son because he is forgiven. But it's more than that. God says in Ephesians 1 verse 5, and I'm reading it from an N, a New Living Translation. So it sounds a little bit different to King James, but it's the same thing. You can go read it in the King James, but it's just, it's just better, this scripture. It's just plainer. I must put it that way, not better. Plainer. It says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to him through Jesus Christ. When Jesus paid the Lutra and the redeeming price, he said he has a certificate of adoption for you. He said, but I'm a, I belong to this, my slave master. I, I've done a lot of bad things, Jack. I, I've, I've, I, I've, I haven't always been a nice person. And I've seen things. And God says, I've given you a certificate of ownership. You now belong to me. Isn't God great? He didn't say you must clear everything up. He didn't say you must be perfect. He just said, believe that I've paid the price. And then that slave would say, are you sure? Are you sure they're not going to shoot me when I leave? He said, no, no, I've paid the price. You're now mine. Come, let's go. And he put a cloak on us and he put a robe, as Lee said, because he's a real father. And he put shoes on our feet and he gave us a meal. And he said, you now belong to a real family that loves you. And then the scripture says, lastly, this is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure. Wow. God didn't do it reluctantly because he had to. He chose to do it, and the scripture says it gave him great pleasure. When he saw that Jack Vint is no longer a slave, he is free to make a choice, and I, he could connect me to his family, and he could connect me to the benefits of a right standing. Lastly, I want to say to us this morning, God has changed your standing. You had no standing before, because of sin. But because of Jesus, God has changed our standing. We have a right standing now. We have an open standing. We, we can come before him and not just bow and cry and grovel. We can come and call him Abba Father. What an honor to a, a Jewish family. Abba Father was the greatest a cry of adoration a child could give his parent. Abba Father. We couldn't before. Because we were slave to another master. And we didn't have the money to pay. We were paupers. Going nowhere. But then Jesus came and said, I'll pay. <laughs> Isn't God good? Amen. Aren't you glad that that's the father that you serve this morning? Close your eyes with me as we pray this morning. Let's give God thanks this morning that we are on the road to redemption. We were on the road to destruction. But God changed our path. Amen. Amen. And he put us on a new road. Hallelujah. Give him praise this morning. Give him a clap. Give him a shout. Give him something. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, as we pray, I want you to pray this with me, a declaration. Lord, I declare I belong to Jesus Christ. I'm forgiven. I am tied to the benefits of a right standing with God. I have true redemption. There is no price over my head anymore. It's been paid. In Jesus' name. Now I want to say just before we close totally, I want to ask if there's any person, maybe you're listening this morning, you've never made that decision for Jesus. You've never said, Jesus, I didn't realize you paid all this price. I felt like I was finished. There was no hope for me. But this morning you want to say, Jesus, can't you give me another chance? Don't you want to come this morning and, and fill my heart? Don't you want to give me that forgiveness, Father God, that you gave through Jesus? I want to receive Jesus this morning as my Lutron, my redemption. Can I do that this morning? And the answer is yes, you can. Right there where you are, ask God to, to come and, and just receive Jesus, his son, as forgiveness for into your heart. And just say, Jesus, I receive you come into my heart and be Lord of my life and forgive my sin and Lord remind me that I am no longer a slave to sin I am a son of the living God and when you do that this morning I can tell you you've had a change of status 
You're no longer guilty. You are free. God now owns your life and He has blessed you. God bless you this morning.